Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I've got Anna back with me today, and today we're going to show you how to draw an ellipse. So Anna, what is an ellipse? It's an elongated circle or oval. Exactly. It's not a true radius. Here is an elliptical arch, and as you can see, the angle of the curve starts out steeper here on the end and then flattens out as it approaches the center. There's nothing that can match the beauty and elegance of the ellipse. From the time of the Greeks and the Romans, we've marveled at the beauty of the ellipse. Now with this irregular curve, you would think that this would be an extraordinarily difficult thing to draw. Everybody knows how to draw a true radius. You just take your tape and swing it along the center point. Easy to do. But how do you draw an ellipse? You just use a string. An ellipse is one of the best examples of the beauty and elegance of math. It really is amazing. Now for starters, let's take a look at the basics of an ellipse. Now the easy way to do them was with Ruframer's Bible. I wrote this book some years ago and it's loaded with all kinds of information on how to frame practically any kind of roof and especially these ellipses and arches. Now I put a link in the description below so you'll know where to get one. So we want to turn to page 212. Now in this drawing it explains everything you need to know to draw an ellipse. And every ellipse has a major axis which is its width from left to right from here to here and a minor axis, which is its height from top to bottom, from here to here. Of course, the ellipse can have infinite variation. You can have a wide, flat ellipse like this one here, or you can have a short, fat ellipse that's practically a circle. But regardless of the size or curve of the ellipse, you can easily draw it with a string. So let's show you how. Now for our example today, we're gonna to have an ellipse with a major axis of 80 inches. So that's from here, all the way over to right here, and then a minor axis of 40 inches from here to here. So Anna's going to drive us a nail right here at the top of the ellipse. There you go. So now I'm simply going to pull from that nail down one half of the major axis. So we had 80 inches overall, so I'm going to pull down 40 inches. And I'm going to swing my tape in an arc until it intersects this line, mm -hmm. and Anna's going to mark that for us. All right, that is foci point one. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to hook, hook the nail in the center. I'm going to swing on an arc where 40 inches intersects this line. And that is foci point two. I'm going to drive a nail in foci point one here. And Anna's going to drive one in foci point two. So now all we have to do is pull a string from foci one up over this nail and back down to foci point two. Now for the fun part. All right, Anna, go ahead and pull our string. We're gonna hook it on foci point one. All right. Up over the top nail and she'll tie it on foci point two. All right, now that we've got the string pulled on it, all we have to do is pull this nail and draw it with our marker. So we hook our marker in the string, and we draw the ellipse. Starting back on the other side. Wow, that is so cool. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we take our deal, we'll hook it in here like so. I'm just amazed by that. You see how this string is doubling back on itself? The changing triangulation of this length and that length, as it moves the same total length, it just draws that perfect elliptical curve. It's an amazing thing. And you know, we can use that to draw any ellipse, regardless of how skinny or fat, the same string method will draw that perfectly every time. So how do we use an ellipse? It's mainly used for arches, but there are other purposes as well. For instance, if you had a barrel top dormer that was intersecting into a sloping roof, they're very handy for that as well. Now for carpenters, the most common use of the ellipse is an elliptical arch. That'll you know, be 90% of the ones you run into. But there are other applications for that as well. And one of those is where a barrel top dormer hits up onto a roof like this. 
Now I'm gonna use this pipe to illustrate it. And if we've got a barrel top dormer, that would be like half of this pipe right here. And where that barrel vault comes up on the other roof, we've got to cut the plywood around it. So, so this is a 1012 pitch. Our plumb cut would be a 40 degree angle. And the complement of that is a 50 degree angle. So we cut this pipe slash barrel top dormer on a 50 degree angle and it yields an ellipse. And so we've got a major axis and a minor axis of this ellipse. And we can use the method we just showed you of to draw that ellipse. And we can, we can use those dimensions to draw that elliptical curve for that plywood that comes down on the top of our barrel top dormer. But one of the more challenging carpentry tasks that you'll run into is where a barrel top dormer actually runs through and intersects in a vaulted ceiling. So this curve of the barrel vault has got to run through and intersect the slope of the vaulted ceiling and it creates that elliptical curve right on the inside of the room. And it's an extremely challenging thing for the drywall guy to get that elliptical curve just perfect. And of course it's up to the framer to give him something to go by. So the framer has to frame that elliptical curve for the drywall man to follow. But actually with this method it's pretty easy really because you simply take and these the major and minor axis draw that ellipse for half of that on a piece of plywood and apply that right on the bottom of the rafters and that will define that curve. You can frame your barrel top roof right to it. It'll flush out beautifully for the drywall guy. You'll get a, a clean, nice elliptical curve. All right, now we showed you Roof Framers Bible mm -hmm. and it's a great resource for framing all kinds of roofs. It has all the answers all pre-calculated for you in a compact pocket reference but it's just too small to have the space for an exhaustive explanation of every single framing situation. For that, I want to recommend this companion book, A Roof Cutter's Secrets by Will Holiday. If you're a serious carpenter and you want detailed step-by-step -step instructions of how to do all these complicated framing situations, you really want to get a copy of Roof Cutter's Secrets. It was written by my friend, Will Holiday. Will has been working in Central America as a missionary for years. If you buy this book, you'll not only get a good book, but you'll be helping such a wonderful cause. You'll love this book. And we put a link in the description below so you'll know where to get one. Thank you, Anna, for all Thank your help you. today. We hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. And you'll want to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our coming videos. And to see all of our current videos, check out a playlist right here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you the next time.